gamers beware, it's Sigil. You thought Thy Flesh Consumed was the end of Doom? Nope. I'd say the two main differences between Episode 4 and this are that for one, Sigil was designed entirely by Romero himself. Yeah, this time he didn't have subhuman supercomputer John Carmack, Arrow directing you to the next part of the level Sandy Peterson, or American McGee to hold him back. Also, it's harder. It's so much harder. I mean, to be fair, this is coming from the moron who once spent all day opening Snapchat thinking it was the normal phone camera. Fuck you. Sigil begins with Baphomet's Domain. Now, it may be the first map in this episode, but make no mistake, if you don't know what you're doing, by the time you reach the level exit, chances are your ass is gonna look like a half-eaten container of store-brand cottage cheese. Store. Fucking. Brand. I should probably point out how triggers work in this episode just to help those of you out who don't know what you're doing. You remember those little decals from the Ultimate Doom that look like the Illuminati? Yet yeah, now you have to shoot them to open doors and unlock certain parts of the level and stuff. It's not hard, really. It's actually pretty easy, unless you run out of ammo and it's too far away to melee. So you get to the end of the level, cottage cheese curds dripping from your ass cheeks. You open the door and there's an imp and some pinkies. No big deal. Nothing to really worry about, right? But you get on the elevator and... <laughs> You're gonna see a lot of shit like this throughout Sigil. She has a good map, I won't lie. If you're paying attention, you'll notice a trigger here that opens up a secret closet behind you that contains a berserk pack. Take it, you'll need it. I'd also recommend grabbing this secret super armor before you fight the Baron of Hell up here. Oh yeah, did I mention there's a Baron of Hell up here? Because there is. Just remember to be smart about it like me. Told you I'm a pro. Have you ever just kissed a girl, derps? We'll get to that later. There's a secret teleporter here where you can get the chain gun in a soul sphere, which you'll also want. <laughs> It's you. Now thankfully, unless you're standing right up at the window, the Cyber Demon's rockets won't reach high enough to hit you. You can also telefrag him if you know where the teleporter is, and I do, I just didn't feel like doing it for the video. <laughs> oh yeah, the maze. So you come into this room where there's an extremely tight but tiny maze. There's a bunch of basic armor pickups, and when you figured out how the maze is designed, you come back here to find a single shotgun zombie in a second soul sphere. Do not pick up that soul sphere yet. By killing the sergeant, you trigger a bunch of monster teleporters. Two caco demons, two specters, a lost soul, and an imp now occupy this maze with you. You might think the maze makes it harder to fight them, but here's the thing. If you pick up the soul sphere, it lowers the maze walls, right? And that's a good thing, you might think, but it also triggers these annoying flashing lights, and they aren't seizure-inducing, nowhere close, in fact, but they reduce your visibility because of the darkness, which ultimately increases the difficulty of the fight between you and the monsters that have spawned in. Here's my favorite part of the level. Oh yeah, that's the stuff. Now we're on to map 3, Cages of the Damned. Cages of the Damned. I hate this level. I fucking hate this level. Every monster in this level can choke on a spoiled hot dog and die. Look at this shit. I have to navigate a bunch of thin ledges while simultaneously dodging a million fireballs being thrown from cacodemons and imps in cages. John Romero, you son of a f There's also a secret rocket launcher here at the ending, too. You'll want that as well. Paths of Wretchedness is a good one, too. The map definitely lives up to its name, but it's not the worst thing ever. The ending was also my favorite part of this level.
badass. Abaddon's Void. Fuck this level too. For some reason, Romero had the bright idea to put two cyber demons right near each other and not give you enough ammo to kill them, unless you've somehow managed to get this far without attacking anything. In which case, you're fucking stupid, and I wouldn't know whether to be impressed that somebody managed to do a pacifist run on Sigil, or that some hippie tried to integrate their tree-hugging ways into a 25-year-old shooter where the only goal is to literally kill anything that moves. I did manage to beat it after like a zillion tries though, so here's the end of the level because it's, again, my favorite part. <laughs> the ending so good? Unspeakable persecution. After you've cleared out this room, there are also three specters and a sergeant that teleport in. Go down this hallway and pick up the plasma rifle. Yeah, it's about time. You jump down here, kill whatever pinkies or sergeants are left if you haven't picked them off from the ledge with a shotgun like I did, and a couple cacodemons spawn in. No problem, even if you're low on shotgun ammo like I was, you've got plenty of plasma ammo. Just use that to kill them. After you do that, you push this button, then you pick up the, se then you pick up this energy cell pack the game thinks is a secret which is weird, but whatever. Then you hit this button which lowers a moving platform with a bunch of health, then you come up here and... Something tells me Romero's favorite Doom monster is the Cacodemon. I don't know man, it's just a weird feeling I guess. So you walk into this dark and spooky hallway and you see this cage with armor in front of it. And I know what you're thinking. Oh look, John Romero's being gen- Wrong. If you seriously thought you were gonna just waltz your happy ass in here, pick that up and be on your merry way, you clearly didn't see the very obvious monster closet right fucking there. You pick up the armor and it opens a monster closet behind the cage to reveal not one, not two, but three barons of hell. Now since you have the plasma rifle, unless you were a dumbass and somehow managed to pass it entirely, you shouldn't have a hard time taking care of them if you had the ammo. Look at that, one of them even disappears like Joe did when I was three. It's fucking there's a maze section with a teleporter puzzle that's really tedious and boring, and there's a reason I didn't record it. Actually, there's three. One, it's boring, just like I said. Two, performance issues. That's right, kids, because Sigil is on a limit removing port, coupled with the fact that this is John Romero we're talking about, the maps are pretty chunky and have a tendency to impact my computer's performance. Three, Romero decided to stick a fucking cyber demon down there. Not the greatest thing when you're stuck in a tightly packed maze with pinkies running around like the freshmen and sophomores at my school who think they own the damn place. Nightmare Underworld can eat my ass. Where are the rest of the levels, derps? There's a reason this is called Pro Sigil Number 1. It took me way too long to record just these levels, so I'll record the rest of it for part 2. I hope you enjoyed the video though. Oh, and one last note, I'll make another video for you cute sluts if I get another message from the human cum stain himself after the little joke I made earlier. Consider it my treat. Pro Sigil Number 2 coming soon. Fucking